Hello and welcome to Today on Campus. In the performance of criminological research, there are many situations in which a student researcher may find themselves interacting one-on-one -on -one with a research subject. This is a fascinating phenomenon that occurs in campuses across the world. Today, we are going to follow the lifestyle and habitats of a few of the Procrastinatus Ridiculus, otherwise known as the Honors Thesis student. Watch them as they attempt to gather data. Proper research begins, of course, by selecting interviewees appropriately. So, how do you feel about gun control? Uh, je ne parle pas anglais. As you can see, any warm body will not always do. In this next clip, we get a glimpse into the importance of setting up an interview correctly. This student researcher, having learned the merits of selecting an appropriate research subject, is now looking for an area in which to conduct the interview. Hi. So, tell me about your history as a protester. not only the privacy of the subject matter, but the quality of the sound recording as the student researcher begins to gather their data. There are several pitfalls in the technological aspects that you need to be aware of before you begin your research. Well, thanks for the interview. Oh, you're very welcome. No problem at all. Let me know how it goes. Oh, I will. Great. Yeah. I can't believe we talked for over an yeah. hour. But only an hour? That's like two hours. Yeah. yeah. All right, have a nice day. Bye. -bye. Bye. No, 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 motherfucker! Observers, adults, colleagues, and peers are puzzled and concerned by the strange culture of masochism that seems to have developed at the university level. Why, you may ask, do these student researchers choose to do this to themselves? What could they possibly gain from some such fruitless exercises? Look a little closer, and we'll try and find out. Rather than risking the pitfalls of sustained verbal interaction with her subjects, she will administer a questionnaire. Watch now as she discovers that she has not, in fact, gone the easy route. Would you mind answering a few questions? Yeah, sure, no problem. It'll only take you a few hours. Alright, okay. <laughs> now, using a slightly revised question list, this student researcher is pressing bravely onwards. Watch, though, as she falls into a few common pitfalls. Do you approve of mandatory minimum sentences in cases of homicide, or are you in support of murderers being set free in elementary schools to murder your neighbor's children? Uh, okay. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 17, please describe how much you hate serial killers. Um, how, how do you feel about death? What is your name? Address, date of birth, social insurance number, student number, and mother's maiden name? Well, thank you for your time. One of the many benefits of a questionnaire or interview is that it can be honed over time if certain questions are deemed poorly worded for whatever reason. Questions that are deemed ineffective at eliciting information can simply be dropped, and the interviewer can develop their skills at eliciting information. I guess I don't really have much to say about hockey. About the local hockey team? Yeah, I mean, hockey games are fun, but it's not a big deal. I just go once or twice a month. Every once in a while? Yeah. Only like once a month, maybe. 
Okay, so you go to one or two games a month? Well, yeah, doesn't everyone? Like, it's obviously you gotta go and support your local hockey team. Like, you have on the team scarf. And it's a fundamental thing, like, a Vancouver, like, living in the city. It's part of our identity. So we would say hockey is part of our identity? Yeah, but what is there to say? Nothing, right? The research subject has been gently prodded into revealing something that they consider too self-evident to discuss. But, just as easily as an advance is made, the researcher can lose that connection with a bit of ill-used language that betrays that they are an outsider to the community. So what does it feel like to you when they get the hockey ball in that? Right. And they can further destroy any advantage they have by using questions that are leading. Doesn't that make you feel good to get the ball into the end zone? Ball in the end zone? Although some researchers do choose to share a personal anecdote or two to establish a connection with an alliance with their interview subject, most competent researchers agree that the researcher should speak around 20% of the time, while the subject speaks approximately 80. Engaging in lengthy explanations of your own perspective only serves to bias or bore your research subject. Either way, it is compromising the data that the student is attempting to gather. Right. Right. Well, I think that's interesting you say that because when I was little, I used to play judo and I won a lot of tournaments. From ages, from age 10 to 19, I had like 20 trophies and all, they were all first place trophies too. And I'm a black belt, fifth degree, and I'm going to plan to go into the Olympics too one day. So we witness the tenuous attempt at a connection with a research subject being severed, and our fledgling attempt at good research practice is dashed against the cruel rocks of ineptitude. Research ethics are a murky stew, and wading into them is not for the faint of heart. At this point, if any small children are watching our program, we advise they be taken from the room, as we will now begin to discuss material so frighteningly subjective, so full of nuance and paradox and balance of interest, so mired with bureaucracy and protocol, that the sheer frustration would be enough to make any sane man tear out their very hair. We will discuss appeasing the research ethics board. <laughs> At a very basic level, the researcher has an obligation to make sure no harm comes to the subject. Causing the death of your research subjects is considered an ethical faux pas. If you have managed to keep your research subjects alive, you must also strive not to emotionally traumatize them. Most students learn it is best to save truly sensitive questions for a one-on-one -on -one setting, rather than broaching them in a focus group. A proper use of good research terminology is also appropriate. Well, I think we've discussed some pretty significant things today. Well, though some of the stuff we talked about were pretty random. Mm -hmm. So, why conduct interviews? Why administer questionnaires? I'm afraid questions like this are a little beyond the scope of our program. For some reason, these honor students seem to find the process worthwhile. Perhaps they are young enough to feel passionate about their topics. Perhaps they hope to one day attain fame, fortune, and publication. Perhaps they labor under the delusion that with their degrees will come employability. Yeah, sure. For my survey. Yeah, sure. Until next week, please take care. Parents, if you are concerned your children may be entering an academic institution, please speak to them and discuss their options. There are counseling services and programs available that will be broadcast on the screen at the end of this show. Have a nice night.